I had just gotten out of class, and when I came in here, it was like I was calm, I was relaxed, like I could literally fall asleep. I almost fell asleep in here, like I was that relaxed. It was, it was amazing. We've been hearing from our clients a lot of concern about uh, mental health. Students in higher education are more stressed, have higher anxiety levels. Um, it's been a trend that's been happening over the last decade or so. It's not been studied of how like a multi-sensory environment can be used just to help a person relax when they're stressed out. The Interior Design Educators Council had a grant called the Stantec Innovative Partnership Grant. And so I applied and our application was accepted and Gwen was the practitioner assigned to me. In 2018, we decided to sponsor that organization, but we wanted to go beyond just a um, financial commitment. We really wanted to engage in the work that they were doing. And we saw this project as an opportunity to study ways that the environment could support and help with that, with that issue. So multifaceted design approach between attention restoration theory, play theory, and then integrating as many senses as possible was kind of the way the design of the space started. And then we at Stantec were able to give some feedback um, based on you know, all of our experience designing educational facilities, the experience that we've had, the things that we've been seeing from our clients to kind of help shape and tweak those ideas um, as they came together. There's multiple different lights in the space, fiber optic lights on the floor. You've also got a light curtain back here, which can change the color. Texture and touch was something that, you know, really we wanted to think about, not just in a physical way with pillows that could be rearranged, but also with weight. We had fans to give airflow, so a different kind of touch, more subtle with skin. Sound, um, water sounds, bubble tube sounds, so movement of water. We gave them a test before they entered the space. They were in the space for up to 30 minutes and then they were given a post test so they took the survey again. Um, and their perceived stress levels, so we weren't testing their blood pressure or their heart rate. We were just asking questions um, based on a scale. So the majority of the students had lower stress levels from the pre-test versus the post test. Before you came in, you could choose between two scents. It was either lavender or orange scent. And when you walked in, like the scent filled your body, and, like it smelled so good. And there was just a relaxing sensation. And then you were able to choose the music and the lights really played a big part in it. Um, and overall, like it just made me feel really good and relaxed and like, I wasn't even thinking about like the outside world. Some of the things we saw in the survey were that students appreciated being able to control the environment. So they could change the color to match their mood. Um, they could change the music and the sounds that they were hearing, whether it was opera or rap or crickets. Giving that sense of choice control um, was, was calming and soothing to people. We asked them also questions about what their preference was for strategies for dealing with stress and anxiety, and a lot of it dealt with socialization. And so we were not anticipating that as the answer. And so for future research or for future multi-sensory spaces, allowing more than one space person to be in the environment at a time might actually increase the impact on de-stressing students. Client needs aren't always readily accessible, meaning I may know what my problem is today, but that problem today may change in 10 years or 20 years. Very much like in the education world, if we're not reflective and we're not constantly reviewing, then we're not growing. We're not learning from our experiences. And so from the research perspective, um, what Gwen's work allowed us to do is create a space that responded to a client need, number one. But they made the space for us to go in and observe what happened when different people utilized that. 
It was a great partnership. Um, it was great working with um, Amanda and Lisa. They both brought um, a lot of in-depth research, um, great experience that we were able to partner with um, to really make the best possible design. So that speaks volumes that they're interested in um, evidence-based design and um, research outcomes and how that can better their design or their approach to design. I think being able to offer our clients a solution like this that is a little bit more proactive before some other kind of more serious intervention is needed is, is really attractive um, to them. Sometimes there's a disconnect between industry and education or industry and research. There's also the time it takes to do research, right? So it might take a long time to do it and it's no longer relevant to industry. So what's helpful is knowing from an interior designer and from people who are practicing what's relevant what information do they need to make designs better? What's going to help them and their clients?